good morning kids uh, we will discuss the snell's law as we know that mu1 sin theta1 is equal to mu2 sin theta2 we will discuss the vector form of snell's law as this will be <coughs> if a plane diagram comes this formula will be more applicable if some three dimensional if the boundary is located in a space then how do we can find out the direction of the refracted ray? For that purpose, often we will take this vector form. So we'll have the assumption. So let this be the normal. And let me choose this as the boundary. Let the incident ray. This incident ray, and let this be the refracted ray. Let me extend this. This is the angle of incidence theta one. Let this be the rarer medium. So refractive index of this be mu one. Let this be the denser medium. The refractive index of this be mu2. Angle of incidence theta1, angle of refraction theta2. Here we'll define this is the incident ray. And the unit vector directed along incident ray, let me call E1 cap. And the unit vector directed along the refracted ray, let it be E2 cap. And let the unit vector directed along the normal. Let it be n cap. Okay, what is this one? This is the refracted. Okay, we'll define this. <coughs> this is the boundary. Let me indicate here. I'll write it. Let this be the boundary. This is the boundary, which will separate the rarer and denser medium. And this is the normal, which will be directed perpendicular to the boundary. This is the incident ray, which will make an angle, angle of incidence theta one with the normal. And what is E1 cap? Unit vector directed along the incident ray. What is E2 cap? Unit vector directed along the refracted ray. Theta one, theta two are the angle of incidence, angle of refraction. This is the Snell's law, we know it. Now we are going to bring this everything in terms of E1 cap, N cap, all this. The vectors, unit vectors have to be brought. We'll be having the information of E1 cap, N cap, the E2 cap should be expressed here. Okay, fine. So let's start with this one. Some assumptions will make it. This will be the N cap, E1 cap. What is the angle? This was the angle initially it was making theta 1. So what is this angle? 180 minus theta 1. So first of all, can you tell what they are? We will define them. First, we'll define them. I'll come to this discussion. E1 cap will define. E1 cap. Unit vector directed along incidentally. What is you you? Now what is E2 cap? E2 cap is unit vector directed along refracted ray. And what is N cap? The unit vector Directed along normal. Okay, fine. Uh, th th these things are very important. <coughs> unit vector directed along unit vector directed along the incident ray. Okay, this is the incident ray, and how E one cap along the incident ray. What is E two cap? Unit vector directed along refracted ray. This is refracted. What is N cap? Unit vector directed along the normal. Let's assume that one, this n cap, the angle 
theta one is angle of incidence. So what is the angle between n cap and e one cap will be one eighty minus theta one. I will write some relation. Let me take the cross product. E one cross n cap is right. This will become cross product of two vectors. So angle between them sine of one eighty minus theta one. From k cap is right. What is k cap? Unit vector directed perpendicular to the plane of the diagram. Then the magnitude. This will be one one sine of one eighty minus theta one will be sine theta one k cap. Or e one cap cross n cap should be equal to sine theta one into k cap. Next one, <coughs> we'll take the dot point. What is k cap? Unit vector directed normal to the plane of the diagram because e one e one e one bar cross n cap. It should be directed perpendicular to the plane containing n cap and e one cap. Now, next part will be we'll take the dot product of these two vectors. This will be e one cap mod of n cap. What is the angle between them? Cos of one eighty minus theta one. This should be equal to one one minus cos theta one. Or this is equal to minus cos theta one. Okay, this is one. Uh, Related between e one cap and n cap. Similarly, we'll we'll go for this e two cap and n cap. What is the angle angle made by the refractor with the normal theta two? What is the angle between n cap and e two cap? Will be one eighty minus theta two. So that will apply. It. Well, thank you. This is in cap. E two cap. This angle theta two. So this angle will be one eighty minus theta two. So the cross product of this directly. Let me write. Uh, this should be equal to magnitude of E two cap is one. Magnitude of N cap is one. Sine of one eighty minus theta two K cap. This should be equal to sine theta two k cap. Now, what is the k cap? K cap will be unit vector directed perpendicular to plane containing n cap and e two cap. The dot product of this. E two some other color. E two cap dot n cap should be equal to magnitude is one cos of one eighty minus theta two. This should be equal to minus cos theta two. We take care of these things. Sir. Fine. These things is what I'll use in equations. Let's proceed here. Now, what is the basic Snell's law? The Snell's law, what it says, like mu one sine theta one equal to mu two sine theta two. <coughs> sine theta one. I can write it as e one cap n cap by k cap. Yeah, yeah. We have substituted this one. Sine theta one. Equal to mu one into e one cap cross n cap by k cap. Similarly, similarly mu two equal to sine theta two. Let me talk. So this will be e two cap cross n cap by k cap. K cap will get eliminated. Equal to e one cap. E two, E two cap cross n cap. We'll take cross product of n cap on both sides. Right? 
then what should be the this equation? <coughs> this should be equal to, uh, we will rewrite this as n cap cross E1 cap cross N cap mu 2 N cap cross E2 cap. We'll expand scalar triple product. Everyone knows uh, in vector algebra you're going to study that. From that it will be N cap dot N cap E1 cap minus N cap dot E1 cap dot n cap mu two n cap dot n cap e two cap minus n cap dot e two cap into n cap. Okay, further we'll expand this. This should be equal to mu one n cap dot n cap will be one. So we'll get this is e one cap n dot N, n cap dot E1 cap. We, we'll apply this one. Minus cos theta one. Here, here, here. Here to substitute. This will be minus cos theta one n cap. n cap dot n cap. This will be one. E2 cap. This will be minus cos theta two in, we are applying this one e2 cap dot n cap you can replace this one minus cos theta 2 okay for this implication of this will be e1 cap plus cos theta 1 n cap mu 2 e2 cap plus cos theta two n cap. We will rewrite this all, all in terms of unit vectors we'll write it here. So this will become mu one e one cap minus mu two e two cap equal to mu two cos theta two n cap minus mu one cos theta one n cap. This is the Snell's law. So if it is, this is the medium, if it, this is the normal, if this is the medium, if this is the incident tree, uh, and this is the refractor tree. Already we have discussed the same thing I'm rewriting. This is E1 cap, E2 cap, and this is N cap. This is mu1, this is mu2. These are the angles. So how the if you know the direction unit vector directed along incident ring, and if you know the unit vector directed along the uh, like a normal directed normal directed perpendicular to the interface, and there's a unit vector directed along the refractor ring. So then the vector form we can express here. So what will be known things? Huh? The information will be given the regarding interface will be known. Then we know the end cap. We know the mu one angle of incidence. Angle of refraction we can find out by Snell's law. What is the Snell's law? The basic Snell's law is this one: mu one sine theta one equal to mu two sine theta. Two. This is like a scalar form vector. This is the what we derived it. This is the vector form. vector. This also is Snell's law. This part is boundary. Okay, a simple uh, approach of mathematics is what we should take. When this will be useful, this will be applicable only when, if you have that interface boundary, if it lies in a space, and if this incident tree is defined by <coughs> unit vectors i cap, j cap, k cap, this formula will be applicable. Most of the situations what will have a plane diagram. For plane diagram, this is this will be useful. For three-dimensional approach, this will be useful. Okay, kids. Huh? Okay, we'll meet again in next video.
uh, will further take the problems related to if an inter if a uh, unit vector represents incident ray, then how to find out the unit vector that will represent the refracted ray. Okay, thank you all of you. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, please do subscribe and share my channel to your friends. Thanks a lot.